Today's Yachts for Sale vlog comes to you from my car instead of my office. Now that's because I'm driving down to Ancona on the east coast of Italy where wider are sea trialing their 165 foot super yacht Cecilia and I've been lucky enough to be invited down there to film a walkthrough video of the yacht. I have to say I have a very special affinity with wider. As you probably know, they built a 150-foot yacht a couple of years ago, and the videos that I produced of that yacht have produced between them well over half a million views on this YouTube channel. I think probably close to one million by now, uh, which tells me that uh, the people who watch this YouTube channel appreciate Wider as a brand. Certainly the comments that I get in the comments section below would indicate that, and so I'm delighted at the possibility now to go down to Wider to film the 165 foot yacht. Usually, when I do a walkthrough video of a yacht, I have access to that yacht for one day, sometimes for two days for the filming. And that makes a lot of sense. If you're a yacht owner and you want to sell your yacht, uh, to let me use it for a day or two to produce really high quality photographic material, video material, to market it, uh, is a reasonable thing to do. However, with the wider it's a very different set of circumstances and so I have to pack in what I would normally do in two days into just a few hours today. Let me explain to you why that is. The wider was launched just a few weeks ago and the period between launch and delivery for a yacht is a very critical time period. I know because I've lived through this many many times on oil for the CRN shipyard. You just imagine what's happening. You don't just launch a yacht and off it goes into the sunset. There's a series of tests that you need to do that can actually take months sometimes with large yachts. Nothing ever goes exactly to plan. A yacht is a very, very complex piece of equipment and so there's always something that either doesn't work at all and needs to be replaced or doesn't work the way you expected it to and needs to be repaired. Um, and this takes time. Sometimes it's silly little things like a, an imperfection in a propeller that causes a vibration. And all you know is that there's a vibration. You don't know what's causing it. It can take a week to find out that the problem is one of the props. Then you have to order a new prop. You have to get it made. Oh, it's a, it's a nightmare period. And to make that more difficult still, many, many yacht buyers will want to wait until the yacht is launched before they come to see it with a view to maybe making an offer for it. And that's understandable. Not everybody does do that. Some people prefer to buy it during the build period so that they can make their own changes to it. But a lot of people will wait uh, for the launch. So what happens? The production department and the technical department have got their heads totally focused on getting the yacht ready for delivery, on perfecting it, finding out what little defects need to put right. The sales and marketing department though, uh, want to get a nice video shoot done, and nice photographs done for their brochure to promote the yacht for sale. And then clients want to come to see the yacht as well, so all of the protective covering that's put on during the, the technical period needs to be taken off, the yacht needs to be washed down, ornaments, fresh flowers need to be put on, ready for the, uh, for the visit, and very wealthy people tend to be very very busy people and their business takes priority so it's not that unusual for a visit from a client to be cancelled sometimes just hours before the visit takes place so then all of the protective covering has to go back on the yacht the technical department and the production department carry on with their trials and in the middle of all of that a yacht broker with a youtube channel says um, do you think we could do a walkthrough video of the yacht as well well, I, unfortunately, I have a great relationship with Wider. They're doing their corporate video anyway yesterday and today, and they fitted me in with this few hours, and I'm delighted and very, very grateful that they have. It also gives me an opportunity to do something I've not done before. And let me explain a little bit of my thinking to you on this. Um, I get a lot of comments on my YouTube channel when I do a walkthrough video of the yacht saying, what about the engine room? You haven't shown us the engine room. What about the crew quarters? 
you haven't shown us the proof for it. I said, you know what, you're absolutely right. I don't tend to show those things in walkthrough videos, but I do want to show them today in this vlog. Since we have a little bit of time together in the car though, I thought I'd just uh, explain to you my, my rationale as to why I don't tend to film engine rooms and crew quarters in walkthrough videos. You can fast forward to the yacht if, uh, if you find this boring, but I do want to explain it to the viewers that are curious. And I'm not married to this idea. I could be persuaded that I'm wrong, but this is my thinking at the moment. The purchase of a yacht is a purchase of passion. A buyer will see a yacht, fall in love with it, and want to get more information. And I hear of this all the time. It's not at all unusual that a captain will call me and say, Dave, Dave, we're in the bay of whatever. And my boss just said to me, what's that yacht over there? And it was Alpha Nero. It was a San Lorenzo 108. It was a Mangusta. Are there any on the market? So the first point of contact with a yacht buyer is a contact with his heart because he falls in love with what he sees. Then afterwards the brain kicks in and they start to ask, how much are the running costs? Where would I put it? How much is a berth? Let's have a look at the engine room. Let's have a look at the crew quarters. Will my crew be happy on board? So the brain kicks in after the heart, but the first point of contact is with the heart. Um, and my marketing videos that I do, the walkthrough videos, the objective is to make a potential buyer fall in love with the yacht. And it's not going to fall in love with the engine room, and it's not going to fall in love with the crew quarters. It's going to fall in love with all those lovely aesthetic things. It's going to fall in love with certain technical details. It's going to fall in love with the fact that the yacht may have a fantastic range, be very fuel efficient. You may fall in love with the fact that the yachts are very, very fast but he's not gonna fall in love by looking at the engine room. So all of that to say that on this visit, on this vlog, um, while I'm waiting for the uh, video guys to be ready to film me, uh, I want to do a little walk around with the more technical areas on the boat and to show it to you. Another exciting thing that might be happening and I may be too late for, is that they've actually booked a helicopter uh, to come to the yacht today and take off and land a few times so that they can display the touch and go helipad at the bow. Now I was really hoping to be there when that happens because I wanted to film it myself, put it on Instagram, use it in this particular vlog, but I think by the time I get there they will have already done that part. Um, however that will be in the final walkthrough video, so that's something to look forward to. So I'm, uh, I'm going to shut up now for a moment and concentrate on driving. I have to go to a place called Porto Novo which is on the uh, south coast Ancona, there's a tender there going to take me to the yacht um, and then let's take a look around it. So pretty much as soon as I got on board the yacht, I was able to start filming my part to the camera, which was great. We got right on down to it. I have one last little piece uh, left to be done. I've set myself up here in the VIP staterooms, just somewhere to put my computer and my stuff. And while the guys are upstairs filming the general views of the yachts, this is a good opportunity for me to show you around behind the scenes. <laughs> Actually, I decided to do a video of the entire yacht from the stern to the bow. Partly because I'm such a terrible photographer and I wasn't quite sure how the other footage that I took was going to work out. As you can see, at the stern of the wider 165, there's still this incredible swimming pool. I'm not going to give away too much about that yet because the corporate video that we produce will really show that off to its full effect. Go up a few steps and you're on the aft deck. That'll be dressed properly again for the main video that we do. Now I could take you in to the main saloon, but the idea of this video is to show you a few more behind the scenes parts of the yacht. So I'll do what I would do if I was a crew member, which is take this side entrance 
down the port side of the yacht. So, I mean... From here, I can either go up to the bridge or through to the galley. As you can see, it's a pretty good spacious galley here. <laughs> All being cleaned down since it's a brand new yacht and we want to keep it looking that way. Now from the galley, if we turn to the left here, there's some steps that go directly up to the bridge and we'll take a look at those in a little bit. Or you can go down to the cruise quarters. So we'll go down, shall we? In the cruise quarters, there's a really spacious, this is where the crew will normally have their lunch together. So I guess really you can probably fit, I guess, eight people around here. And also notice that up here, they've got monitors so that they have um, CCTV systems to be able to look at all various parts of the yacht. If an engine sets on fire, then they want to know about that. And here you can see the engine parameters. It's not switched onto that screen just yet, but that's what Naviop does. It just shows oil temperature and other parameters that are useful to know about the engines. Out of the dinette, so we have this long corridor here. Now these doors off to the left and to the right are all crew cabins. I'm not going to open them because the crew is sleeping on board while the video is going on. They've been filming for two days and they've all got their personal belongings in there, but they'll have two bunks, one above the other. And then here we have uh, the laundry. You have two good sized washers, two good sized dryers, an ironing board, everything's all prepared. And a storage room pantry here with some fridge freezers. They're very large. The interesting thing though, comes through this door. Behind this door is the power generation room. Wider, as you may know, doesn't have an engine room because it doesn't have engines midships like most yachts do, but it has four variable speed generators to power the battery banks uh, located in the bow. Now, Wider faced some criticism from the cynics who felt that this wouldn't give you enough room to work in the bow, but as you can see here, there's plenty of room. You can walk around, you can work on things, you can change filters, you can get repair work done, you can monitor the whole ship from this area, there's even a workbench and here in fact are those four generators, one on top of each other um, on special cradles which resist, um, resist uh, vibration and, and lots of noise insulation too. Now these white panels here hide the battery banks, it's very easy to remove one of those panels and change a battery uh, so there you go, That's uh, there you have it. That's the power generation room of the wider 165. As we go out of the cruise quarters, just a very interesting feature here is that this door has a small corridor through it and there's a hidden entrance that goes through to the guest staterooms. Now why that's so good is because it means that the stewardess in the morning can wake up Actually, she'll be awake before the guests, I guess. But she can come straight into the rooms, take the linen out, and straight back through to the laundrette area. So that the guests don't even know anybody's been in their rooms and changed the linen. Back up the stairs. brings us through to the bridge. The bridge on the wider is actually quite famous. It's very, very space aged. Right now there's protection on here and there's work being going on. There's been technicians here for most of the day. And again, I'm not going to open this door, but that door there goes through to the captain's quarters. Again, the captain's been sleeping on board while they've been doing sea trials and the video work yesterday. Coming out of the bridge, we've got 
direct access to the bow and as you can see at the bow area usually it's all closed up and looking lovely for the guests but when it's open there's tons of room here for storage on both sides of the yacht we've got the touch and go helipad and all underneath this area there's space for tenders and for toys which exit through the side of the hull nice little feature as well so you can see the deck hardware so the winches for the anchor and for mooring lines They're hidden away at a lower level so that when the guests are sunbathing or enjoy the jacuzzi they don't have that ugly sight of the winches to disturb their peace so that pretty much ends the uh pretty much winds up this uh, walkthrough video of the wider 165. This has been a very different sort of video to the one that I usually produce. It's been very off the cuff, nothing's been scripted, not an awful lot of research done, but I just thought I'd bring you along with me on my day filming on the wider 165 and show you a little bit around uh, behind the scenes. If you enjoyed this style of video, do let me know. I'll work on improving the quality of the videos in the future. Uh, the following vlogs that I'm going to be filming will probably be done at the Cambodia show and they'll be done by a professional videographer with professional sound equipment. So I do hope that you'll enjoy those. I do hope you'll stick with me and I do hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. I think I should leave you with a far better view than my face with my hair blowing all over the place.